In this video, we'll talk about friction. So, what is friction? It's a force that opposes motion between surfaces, but also allows us to walk. Think about trying to walk on ice. Friction opposes your motion, except when it provides an anchor point so you can walk. We'll talk about this in another video. There are two types of friction forces, static and kinetic. Static friction between objects prevents the objects from moving. It's a friction you're trying to overcome to get the object to move. Kinetic friction is a friction between two surfaces that are moving once you overcome the static friction. We'll use a dog pulling a bag of food across a concrete floor as our example. Here's a better diagram of our dog. Let's first see why friction happens. Friction happens because of microscopic roughness between the two surfaces and adhesive forces between the molecules that make up the two objects. Let's say the bag is very heavy. Then the dog must apply a greater force to overcome the static friction by pulling harder backwards. Because the bag is heavier, it presses more firmly against the ground, which causes more friction force. The frictional force has two forms with different magnitude. One form is for static friction, and the other is for kinetic friction. Let's define some terms. Static friction is the amount of force needed to keep the object in place. N is the normal force. Mu is the coefficient of static friction. We'll come back to this later. Let's first talk about three specific conditions. First, we have an object that is not moving and no horizontal force is applied to it. This means the static friction is zero. Let's say you apply a force to an object. If you keep applying the force, eventually the static friction will hit a maximum just before it starts to move. We have the static friction maximum equals mu and the normal force. Note, this condition will be called Fs max because it is the max static friction before the object moves. Second, let's say you're just touching an object. As soon as you apply a force on an object but it doesn't move, static friction is the same as the force applied. And we have the condition static friction is less than mu and the normal force. And third, once the object moves, it accelerates and we have the applied force greater than static friction. As it keeps moving, we now call this kinetic friction. The object will continue to move as long as you keep applying a force to it. Now, let's say the area around the bag is oil. It is easier for the dog to pull the bag. Why is this so? There is less resistance between the surfaces, but this doesn't mean the surfaces are friction free. There will always be adhesive forces between the molecules of the two surfaces that determine the amount of friction. Here, the molecules are not interacting as much, so the dog finds it easier to pull the bag. Remember we were talking about what this formula for friction means? So now, it's an appropriate time to talk about mu, or the coefficient of friction. We have one for the kinetic friction as well and you'll always find that it's smaller than the corresponding coefficient for static friction. So here are some examples. The coefficient is usually taken from a table and refers to two surfaces. There's no plastic on oil, so we'll estimate it to be 0.4 for the static friction, and once the bag starts moving, we'll set the kinetic friction coefficient at 0.3. So that takes care of the coefficient of friction, and now we can jump back to our example and add some numbers and apply this. We'll talk about the difference when the bag is dragged on concrete versus a shiny wax floor. Let's say the bag's mass is 10 kilograms. The weight will be 98.1 newtons, and the normal force will equal its weight. We'll set the coefficient of static friction to 0.5 assuming the concrete is smooth and not very bumpy. All we have to do now is find the amount of static friction. We get 49 newtons. 
Now, let's see what happens when the dog pulls the bag across a wax wooden floor. You can see that the kinetic friction is pretty low for this surface. Now let's see if you can apply what we learned. To find out if the bag moves or not, start with the equation for static friction. Now we can plug in the numbers. We got 294 newtons for static friction. We said the dog applied a force of 100 newtons, so this isn't enough to get the bag to move. That's it for now. In the next video, we'll see how friction works when the dog is on a slope. See you then.